Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. We get a lot of questions from our Christian viewers, Dr. Shabir, about what makes the Prophet Muhammad a prophet. How do we judge what is a legitimate prophet and a false prophet? So according to Christians, there are some criteria for prophets, right? Um, But I'm not sure if the Prophet Muhammad that we understand fits those criteria. So we have a question here, Dr. Shabir, that I thought it was worth exploring with you. So the question we have is, how do you understand Deuteronomy um, 18, 14 to 18, which says, the Lord, your, your God, will raise up for you a prophet like me. So the person says, the criteria of a prophet like me requires speaking directly to God as Moses did, as the Israelites didn't want to communicate with God directly anymore. And the person is saying, well, the prophet Muhammad never spoke directly to God. Therefore, how is he a prophet? <laughs> okay. So um, more specifically, the, the, the um, questioner is referring to verses uh, 15 to 18 okay. of, of Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Uh, and uh, there it speaks about a prophet who's going to be like Moses. But uh, the questioner is uh, extrapolating from that and adding that, okay, Moses spoke directly to God, uh, though that's not necessarily mentioned in this passage. So mm, it's, not, okay. it's not a criterion uh, that in order to be a prophet, you must speak directly to God. Okay, Moses has that distinction to be sure, uh, but that's not a criterion for being a prophet. There are many prophets in the Old Testament who are said to be like Moses, though they did not have that same distinction as Moses had. For example, it is thought that Joshua after him was the prophet like him. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, New Jerome Biblical Commentary uh, even says that uh, what is meant by that passage is not that there will be one particular individual who will be like Moses, but there there will be a series of prophets. Whenever a prophet is needed, God will commission one to guide uh, the the people. Uh, But just before uh, the advent of Jesus, uh, many were reading the uh, Hebrew scriptures and interpreting that to mean that there will be one specific individual. And uh, this uh, is reflected in the Gospel according to John in chapter 1, where uh, people come up to Jesus and they ask him, okay, are you that prophet? Hmm. So that means they have a sense that there is going to be a particular prophet. So Raymond Brown, in his commentary on the Gospel according to John, uh, refers back to this Deuteronomy uh, passage from the Old Testament, in which uh, the prophet like Moses is spoken about uh, with the understanding that uh, the people at the time of Jesus are expecting uh, that there's going to be that prophet, that Hmm. singular prophet, one like uh, like Moses. Mm -hmm. It is also evident. And did Jesus speak to God? uh, Well, uh, the, the New Testament depicts him as having a very close relationship with God, even closer than than Moses. Yes. Um. Now, coming back to the speaking uh, with God, I, I want to ma- make sure that I deal with this lest it slips my mind. Uh, so, because that's an important part of the question. Did the Prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace, speak with, with God? The answer to that from the Muslim tradition is yes. Uh, the, uh, the Quran says that it's not appropriate for, you know, a human being to approach God except from behind a veil uh, or that God sends uh, a messenger to that person which means something like an angelic messenger, or that uh, God uh, inspires that individual. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was uh, you know, the, the recipient of re- revelation in these uh, various uh, ways. Now, speaking of th- uh, to the human being behind a veil, uh, this is what uh, the um, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is believed by Muslims to have experienced uh, during the night journey and ascension, that uh, unique experience that happened during the month of uh, Rajab, just uh, a couple of months before. Uh, the uh, Rajab is two months before the month of Ramadan, which is well most uh, known among the, the months uh, in the Muslim calendar. Uh, so the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on that uh, night journey is said to have come close to God. Uh, the 53rd chapter of the Quran makes mention of this, where it says uh, that uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came so close, it was as if uh, it was like two bows lengths or even closer still, which is an idiomatic expression in the Arabic language to mean that the Prophet, peace be upon him, came very close to God. And then God uh, uh, revealed to him what, uh, what, what he wanted to reveal. Uh, Islamic tradition picks up on this and says that uh, when 
uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, went up in that night journey, in that remarkable experience, God revealed to him certain passages of the Quran. And uh, um, uh, some commentators on the Quran say uh, that the last uh, passage of Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, actually was revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, at this time. And the Tahiyyah, the tahiyyah that we recite in our uh, prayers, and we see at tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa taibat, uh, it is said that this uh, composition is actually uh, put together from the conversation that occurred between God and his prophet and with the angels being bystanders and, and adding in their um, piece uh, in, in the whole drama that uh, took place on that remarkable uh, night journey. So uh, in the first place, uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gives uh, tahiyya or a greeting to God. And, uh, and then uh, the, the angels, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the God says, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi, uh, you know, peace be upon you, O Prophet. And, and the angels say, say you know, um, something adding to the the completion of what we uh, recite. Uh, the angels bearing witness, for example, that there is no God but God, and Muhammad is the prophet and messenger of God. And this is what we recite in our daily uh, prayers. So yes, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did speak uh, to God, but that's not to take away from the fact that uh, Moses has a special distinction, even in the Quran. The Quran says, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَىٰ taklima." God spoke to Moses a, a real speaking. Hmm. And, um, you know, there's a, a kind of construction in the Arabic language here that is difficult to um, uh, to translate in, in English to, to give it like a... An nice, emphasis? Yeah, yeah, there's a kind of emphasis that is there in the Arabic. And um, what I mean to say is to translate it in English in a smooth way, if you want to go literally, it doesn't uh, work. Hmm. Because this is what is referred to in Arabic as the maful, maful mutlaq. Uh, so God spoke to him a speaking. Uh, it's as if uh, we say, you know, uh, somebody gave this guy, beat that guy a beating. It's like mm. a real beating. It's a thorough beating, mm -hmm. right? So it, there's a way of expressing that in, in Arabic that's very concise. So it's hard to translate. So in English, we could say that God spoke to Moses in a manner that is real, like mm -hmm. in, in a, in a, he spoke to Moses in a very literal way, uh, something of this nature. But we can't take that too literally because God is not like a man who comes to speak to another uh, man. Um, and, and perhaps the communication is largely mind to mind between God and, and human being. Uh, but nonetheless, we have a certain imagery there. But now, to, to pick up where I left off, Sophia, if you, if you allow me. <laughs> I have, so, so I was getting to the point of uh, thinking about what is said in the New Testament about this prophet who is going to be like Moses. Moses yes. So uh, think about the, on uh, uh, the, 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 the unfolding of that history. Jesus, on whom be peace, is said to have been crucified. Then he was raised up into heaven. And now the disciples of Jesus are preaching. Acts of the Apostles is that one book in, in the New Testament uh, that gives us the history of the disciples, where they went, where they preached, and, and so on. In the third chapter of Acts of the Apostles, P Peter is addressing the crowd. And he's saying to the crowd that Jesus must remain in heaven until the time of refreshing comes. And what will happen at that time of refreshing? That's uh, the, the fulfillment of what God said when he said, I will raise up among the brethren of the Israelites uh, a, a, a prophet like Moses. So there is still that expectation that a, the prophet like Moses is to come. Uh, so one might say, but uh, within the New Testament, this is interpreted to mean Jesus. Yes, we can grant that. But the time at which this is said uh, means that so far, Jesus had not fulfilled uh, what was expected in this declaration that the prophet like Moses is going to come. The most one can say is that when Jesus comes back, he will be the prophet like Moses. But we can say that uh, in the meantime, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, has 
shown himself to be that prophet like Moses. Because now going back to the book of Deuteronomy, what were the, the distinctive features of that prophet? It says that that prophet will not speak of his own, but what he hears, that is what he will speak. And he will foretell about the things that are to come. That fits the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, exactly, because he did not speak of his own. The Quran says in the 53rd chapter, he does not speak of his own. Uh, it is only a revelation that is being inspired into him. One who is mighty in power has, has taught him this. Uh, so, so that's God revealing to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So he is hearing the revelation and he is then speaking to people and proclaiming what God has said. Now, there seems to be an indication, even from the lips of Jesus, that such a prophet is going to come after him. Now, of course, the New Testament was written from the point of view of those who thought, okay, Jesus was the be-all and end-all, so no prophet after him. He's the Son of God, and after the Son of God comes, why do you need another prophet? But in, in uh, John chapter 16, verse number 7 in particular, there seems to be an indication that another human figure like Jesus and like Moses, will, will come into the world. He, again, will be one who will not speak of his own, but what he hears, that is what he shall speak. Um, I, I believe these are good references to the Prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace, and therefore Muslims have every reason for believing in the Prophet Muhammad and uh, for also conveying that message about him uh, to readers of the other scriptures. Very interesting and insightful. Thank you, Dr. Bear. You're welcome. Mississauga Muslim Media Hub is here! Imagine creative artists coming together here to produce films, TV shows, and podcasts. Join us! And let's together share the message and beauty of Islam and Muslims with the world.